Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It's me, and I'm live. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Live from Beverly Thrills, California, Michael Savage. Yes, indeedy, the hardest working man in the history of talk radio refuses to take time off unless required to by circumstance or forces beyond his control. I guess most people who are sane are on vacation. They're skiing in Aspen. They're dining on expensive foods with George Soros, plotting how to destroy America even further. Or they're in Hawaii watching the president climb up Cocoa Head pretending he's on Mount Everest. But no, I sit before you at a new studio. It's an inaugural show. Thanks for being with me. This is actually my third studio in Beverly Thrills. I don't come down here too often. I had one so I can tell you where it was and because it's gone. It was up on Franklin Street. Nice little studio in an alcove. Looked down on... I think I looked down on Hollywood. I don't know what I looked at, but I always have to look at a city. I am now not looking at a city. I'm looking at a mountain. In San Francisco, I don't look at a city unless I'm in the city. Then I'm looking at nothing because it's closed. It's indoors. I like to look at a city, though, and I've done that when I'm on WABC. Uh, other than most studios, you know, you have no, no window view unless you own the company. If you're a mere talk show host, you're behind glass. And I'm here, and the news is so horrendous that I will guide you through it and try to not to ruin your week. But the thing is, it's bad. It's getting worse. We're losing the war against ISIS because we have a capitulating... I, I can't... I don't have words for him. In fact, when people... And I, if someone runs into me and starts me political, starts me off politically, I have to stop. I become apoplectic. Ap apoplectic. How this man has not been thrown in prison for what he has done to America and the world is beyond me. So you say, what man are you talking about? Uh, fill in the blank. There's quite a few. Fill in the blank. Everyone on the left. How's that? Let's start with that. Now winnow the list down and separate free speech out from sedition. And you know who I'm talking about. I mean, it's one thing to say you're a liberal. It's another thing to undermine police, undermine the flag, undermine father, undermine mother, undermine the military, undermine everything decent in the world and call yourself a liberal. Other than that, I'm in a great Christmas spirit. Surrounded by family last night, birthday party for one of the family members in a Japanese restaurant. That were, I, it was pretty good, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know how any, I don't understand Japanese food. I don't want to say anything that might be construed as uh, off color here, but I can see why people in Japan don't look too happy. Their cuisine is horrible. They walk around, there's no food. S uh, pinworm sushi came out for hours. I kept waiting for the meal. I said, look. If there's no bread, it's not a meal to me. I'm sorry, I'm European. I went down to a deli and bought four bagels, I swear to God. They're mainly young people at the party. I came back up, and they said, uh, Savage, what's in the bag? I said, nothing. Brown paper bag into a Japanese restaurant in Beverly Hills, four bagels. I had to eat a bagel in order to get through the meal. They're lucky I didn't bring a pizza in. How many pieces of that pinworm sushi can you possibly eat? Anyway, it was a fun party. Everyone had a good time. I'm including you in this in order to make certain you know that you're not imagining the show and that it's not a replay. I'm warming you up. I had serendipity yesterday. Not for lunch, but I had serendipity for breakfast. It was quite good. I went out to a local deli in a hidden location to be alone. I needed to be alone. Love family, but I wanted to be alone. I'm a loner. Went out, went to a little deli. No one knows it. Offbeat. No seats. Deli man was typically nasty. Deli man, like, what do you want? I walk in. What do you? What do you think I want? What did I come in here for? A piano lesson? He gives me the the. He's not even New York, but he has the attitude. Yeah. What do you want? What do you mean? What do I want? I'm in a deli. What do you think I came here for? He says, uh, Are you alone? Uh, no. What do they ask me if I'm alone? If I'm standing there for? I always wonder about that. No, I have the 26 clowns in the clown car outside. They'll be coming along in a moment. She says, uh, Take one of those seats over there. 
Empty seat. I sit down, I look to my right, and I swear I couldn't believe it. There was an iconic actor who was politically sane. He's on the right side of things. And I've had I've actually had breakfast with him in this deli twice before because he loves my writings and he loves my show. I've not been in touch with him for two years. And there he is sitting there reading a film script. I look over and I said, I'm not going to mention his name because I think we'd be using him in a way, and I don't want to use him. It's a good story, though. Not just that I met an actor and I'm, you know, worshipping an actor. The guy is very smart, and what we said to each other was even more interesting, or else I wouldn't bore you with it. Puts the script down, hey, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. One word leads to the other, and we can't stop two magpies. He's having bacon and eggs. I'm having tuna on rye, in case you need to know. And we're talking and talking. And I'm, one of the things that came back to me was, is he listened to me as I spoke. Most people don't listen to a word anyone says, you know, in America. And after about 15 minutes of conversation, this iconic actor said to me, he was once introduced to a Hopi elder. And the Hopi elder looked down at the floor as he spoke with him. And he said, he told him, that is, he told, the Hopi told the actor, that in his in their culture in the Hopi culture they look at they look away from the person they're speaking with so they can focus on what the person is saying and we in America have developed this thing of staring someone in the eye to show that we're what are we trying to do dominate them we're not really listening to them am i right about that robert you noticed everyone oh look at the guy in the eye to show you're not afraid of him or what are you doing that for i find it's easy not to look at someone in the face when they're talking if i want to hear them but i learned that as an american you got to stare him in the eye but you're not really hearing him anymore. You're trying to manipulate him. That's why everybody on television is false. Because they're not, they're not really speaking to you. They're reading a script, and they're looking in the eye of a camera. So how honest can that be? But let's put that aside. So I thought that was very interesting. There were many other things that were said. And I said, did you, did you get a copy of my new book, Government Zero? He said, oh, no. He said, I want to go right after the show to a bookstore. I want to ask for Michael Savage's new book. I said, no, you're not doing it. He insisted on buying me breakfast, which I, he grabbed the bill before I could. Honestly, I would have done it. Not that they're expensive. I insisted, listen to this. I insisted he came to the house. I said, listen, this is a fateful thing, my friend. I said, I brought one copy of my book to this house that I'm in, where I'm going to do my first show on Monday, which is today, of course, which apparently is the 28th of December in the year of our Lord, 2015. And I said, I brought this book for someone, and it's you. And you have to come to my house you have to accept the book. I did. You talk about audacity. That's my middle name, Michael Audacity Savage. And he's okay. Okay, I'm busy. Sure. Came over, gave him the book. Exchange, exchange pleasantries. It was a nice morning. So why am I telling you the story? To show you I know an actor? No. I'm telling you that there's elements in our life that we have no control over, both good and bad. And there's serendipity in our life. And if you don't know it by now, you probably should learn that many of the things that have occurred in your life have occurred not by chance. Why did I go to that deli when I hadn't been there before? Why did I go there when I didn't even want to go there? I just wanted to get out. Why that place? I started to go down the wrong road and turn back. Could have gone down the hill to uh, the real Beverly Hills where all of the, you know, Nate and Al's are and all that. I don't know why. Whatever. And so I think that that set the stage for my... I say my new arrival in Beverly Thrills because there's a lot of us other things going on that I'll tell you about if if it's of any interest. The news is so horrible. I'm trying to save you from it. I had a friend when I lived in the Tongan Islands. He was older than I, and he used to travel around New Guinea. And he was a world famous malariologist. Malariologist. He's dead now. I can mention his name. He was a great man. I loved him. He was like a brother or an uncle. Robert Desowitz. He wrote some great books, wonderful books. He wrote books later on in his life, encouraged by me, because although I was younger and a grad student, I had published Earth Medicine, Earth Foods in 1972, and then other books, and he became encouraged by the fact that I could write books, and he wanted So he wrote some very good books. Anyway, he was around in the old days of the British Empire, even though he's from Brooklyn, I think, or Buffalo. I don't know where I love the man. And he told me that the British had a certain way of treating turkeys before slaughtering them. Because I knew you all had turkeys, right? He said they give them gin. They give them a little gin, get the turkeys stoop, a little stupefied, and then they'd kill them, and the meat was uh, was softer. I wonder if we can drop some gin over the Arabian Desert. 
Can we drop some tanker loads of gin over ISIS and then uh, flamethrowers to go with it? Let them set themselves on fire and become human torches? Is that a possibility? Look, if I were conducting the war, here's what happens. You want the war over with? Make believe you're General MacArthur, because we know we're losing the war. 40% of Americans say the terrorists are winning. You hear this? That's because A, Obama is playing either for the other side or not playing at all. That, that's a given. That's a given. The only reason this thin fro phony started conducting the war is because Putin made him look like what he is. So he said, uh-oh, I better, better show him I really care. A year now, biggest air force in the world. What did he do? Nothing. He blew up sand, this phony. 40% of Americans say the terrorists are winning. 40%? It'd be more like 140% if you're talking about people with a, with a brain. Not diehard morons who don't even know about the rapes, the murders, the kidnappings, the slave markets. There's a simple way to end this war. It's not as complex as you are hearing. Don't you love all the people on TV when they talk about this ISIS thing? I watched Fox News last night, and I got a news. Look, they're smart people. They're good-looking. They're intelligent, this and that. No one said anything. Mincing words, this and that, the hen and the hen, the hem and the hay, the The good Muslims, you can alienate We really need them. We must have them. Unless you're on their side, you're going to alienate all of them. We don't want to turn. I heard the same thing a million times. Stop already with the good Muslims. Don't tell me about the good Germans. Let's focus on killing the Nazis. And then the good Germans will step forward. I'm sick of this. Am I live, Robert? Or did the line go dead already? Nothing, zero, no calls. I, I, the calls that were hanging hung up. They got scared. They thought they were listening to uh, 855-407. Is that my number? I don't even have my number on the screen, Robert. You better give it to me. I've forgotten it already. What is my phone number? 855-407-SAVAGE? No one's calling today. Look at that. So no one's listening. Either that, or, either that or the government has put me into a place where there is actually no radio show. And it's just me sitting with a microphone. And they told me it's a radio show that goes out to the world as usual. And there's actually a Skype screen with Robert eating pizza in Dallas and Clint eating a... a are you eating a sandwich yet? Uh, did you guys get the food? Well, open the box. Let me see what you're eating. I told him since let's have a party. I had... I violated my diet already. Oh, that looks good, man. I really wanted a pizza. Instead, I got a corned beef sandwich. Really go after the arteries today. That's how depressed I am. Arterial degradation. <laughs> uh, my phone number is 855-407-282. So I look at the news, and I see nobody will say one word about how to actually defeat ISIS. You know, I like to watch boxing matches. I noticed something in a boxing ring. You know what I noticed? One guy tries to beat the other guy's brains in. It's real interesting. And then after it's over, they hug each other because they're human beings. I like the sportsmanship. With rare exception, after pummeling each other to kill him, when one guy knocks the other one out, okay, afterwards they go shake his hand. We got to kill the other person. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Knock him out. Over. Get the game over with. Then we'll worry about the sensibilities of the good Muslims. That's number one. Stop already shaking in your boots with the good Muslims. How many of them have stepped forward? The good Muslims. Oh, the good Muslims. I'm sorry. Let's see the good Muslims. Here we go. You remember the Muslim massacre in San Bernardino just a few weeks before Christmas when Santa came to town? But instead of Santa coming to town, two Muslim maniacs came to town. Farouk and the other one, the witch. The witch and a burqa. And freak. The freak and, and the freak and, and the burqa job. Listen to this. What did I say to you on this show the day of that massacre after it happened? We knew who did it. But we knew it was the freak, two Muslim freaks. What did I say to you? What did I say to you? I said, get in that mosque where these two bums went and pull them out by their, by their, their, their whatever they're wearing and shake them out somewhere. Give them a rubber hosing. Nobody would go in the mosque. Well, finally, a month later, a month later, the FBI goes in. Here's the headline. Cleric. Now he's a cleric. You hear? The imam is now a cleric in order to even soften it even further. He went from radical Muslim hate-spewing piece of garbage to imam. Now he's a cleric. Cleric denies ties to San Bernardino killers as phone records surface. Well, the real story is a little deeper than that, and you'll hear about it. You'll also hear about this vermin, George Soros, 
telling us not to be hysterically anti-Muslim. You piece of 